to get right for this one, my friends. Got to get right for this one. Makes it legal. Keep that around there in case the in case the doors come crashing in. Good morning. Good morning, any and all who stopped into uh, to hear me talk about the the Grateful Dead. My my days my days of the, as a deadhead. I don't know if I was a real deadhead, but but I was hanging out with a with a, with a few real deadheads. Mr. Pad, salute my brother Yoda. Yoda Crush Wise, Crush, the legendary Crush. Salute, salute for stopping in here. I appreciate it, man. I'm just, uh, I'm going to reminisce about some, uh, some Grateful Dead. Yesterday I was, I, I, I was walking the dog and I, and I heard freaking, I heard playing in a band coming out of this apartment, this house. Very, uh, very loud, very kind of, kind of brought me back. And I, and I could smell the flower coming from the house. I could smell the herb. I, I said, oh, this fucking, some old deadheads over here. And I, I saw the guy later when I was going by, fucking gray beard, long hair. Yeah, he looked like I looked like an old deadhead to me. Let me do a couple more of these to get my get myself in the right frame of mind to speak on the Grateful Dead here. Man, I woke up. The arthritis was killing me this morning. It's still windy up here in New England, man. We got these 25, 30 mile an hour gusts. So it's very rocky, rolly out there on the bay. Wind is blowing like crazy. PGH dog, my brother. Salute, man. Salute, man. This is just a uh, Mr. Pads. D E A. <laughs> Yeah, you know you got you can't break any laws. Not at not at this stage of the game, bro. Not at this stage of the game. I mean, I uh, I don't have the time to do so. I don't I I don't uh, I don't rile anybody in that department. I, I hope anyway, man. I hope I don't, man. I I, I don't uh, I don't blatantly break any laws, and I don't I don't uh, I just don't do it, man. It's just not worth it. I fought the law, and the law won. But anyway, man, going back to these. Going back to these fucking Grateful Dead days, man. They were early seventies. In fact, it's, it's the the first concert my, my my dad and my mom let me go to at the Ron Auditorium in the the spring of nineteen seventy one. Me and my friend Alfred went up there. He had a brand new must not a brand new, but he had a new Mustang. Just got his license. He bought himself a Mustang. Maybe paid about twelve hundred bucks for it. Looked brand new back at the time, like a sixty seven fucking Mustang. Fastback. We were, we were the dudes then, bro. I think we bought a couple of bottles of Ripple wine. We had some guy at the, some guy. Used to be a lot of drunks in my town. A lot of, a lot. Of, we called them bums. We never called them homeless people back then. They were just used to hang out and they, they'd make runs to the packy for us. As long as we, we gave them a few bucks and they were happy to do it. It was kind of like their job. But anyway, man, we got a couple of bottles of Ripple and we push and and we got a bag of. Meshmakan, I remember that grass. Mechmakan, Meshmakan. Wow, I'm seeing a, a seagull suspended in the wind. 
flying backwards over here. Crazy sights, man. Crazy sights. Yes, sir, Mr. Padge. Bobby Chez is coming tonight. I spoke with Bobby for about an hour yesterday, man. I said, damn, I should have turned the microphones on. We, we could have done a show. But anyway, man, that's that's coming on later. This is this is like a practice, you know. This is just uh some old old talk from 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 the from the dead days. George H, my brother, salute, man. Thank you for stopping. Thanks for rolling by, man. We're just reminiscing over here, bro. The deadheads. And I'll tell you, bro, these these, these fucking guys, man. They were they they look like the dead. They they kind of they kind of were the dead one guy's name was dan he looked like the bass player um phil lesh and then and and then the, the other dude there okay what the fuck was his name pokey it, it, i think his real name was lawrence popeel he died man he, he drank himself to death but he was the jerry garcia i mean this dude would he'd be two blocks away from your house and he'd give you a phone call oh i'm too drunk man where am i I was like, I have to go pick him up, you know. But anyway, man, God bless his soul, man. Pokey. Oh, he, funny, funny guy. Grateful Dead when he woke up in the morning till he went to bed at night. Oh, Mr. Pads, yeah, I had I had a ton of Grateful Dead albums. And, and it's funny because I, I gave them away when I got into jazz. And then I got into the Dead again. And I bought a bunch of Dead CDs. If I, and if I went hunting around here, I could pull out probably 15, maybe more Dead CDs. Because, you know, I it's funny because you're... You kind of um, you realize what what great musicians they were, you know. Jerry, Jerry, very much so, man. Jerry would play. He, he went country western, not country western, he went bluegrass. He's done jazz, reggae. I mean, you know, may may not be as talent, may not be as quick, and have the technique of these guys like John McLaughlin and you know um, Al Demiola and all the rest of them. But you know, Jerry. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Jerry later. I'm, I'm going to go back to Boston for these fucking deadheads, man. They were crazy. And it's funny because they were all they were all students. And a lot of them were, um, were uh, chemistry majors, veterinary students. So they, um, and they, and, and they like to get high. They, they were high all the time. Like these guys were, were dealing pot back in the day where it was, it, when you find a connection, man, you, you were thankful. But I digress. Wow, I ran out of, ran out of gas. No seeds in there, so I'm, I was a little piggy. I filled it too full sugary but anyway man I'm, ha I'm hanging out with these guys for a while you know i was going over there coffee grab some weed listen to some dead he said hey why don't you come around friday man we're having a weekend we're having a, a fucking marathon oh, marathon huh you know I, i've heard of these bro so mick smith what's happening brother so anyway man Friday night, around five, six o'clock, go over there, man. Take this. A little fucking hit of blotter acid, window pane. I mean, these guys are it was um it was tripping time and LSD and fucking Grateful Dead. All these cats had. They had reel to reels of uh six hour Grateful Dead concerts. You know, dead in in Belgium, dead in fucking uh in Newark. I mean San Francisco, all kind of, all, all kind of real to real dead concerts, long ones. Cause see the the dead, two pack, my bro, salute, bro. See the dead was a band where they actually allowed you to record their concerts. They weren't into copywriting back. I'm, they are now. I'm sure I'm probably gonna get mad for this one, but I don't care, man. I'm just gonna, we're, we're in here for the for the buzz, for the camaraderie. See see all my my brothers and my sisters stopping in here, man. You know it. It humbles me. It really does, man. You know, getting up to 500 subs, I appreciate that. I got this community page now, man, and you know, I can put things out. I want to get Mad Chat up to 500. G5. There's a bunch of bunch of cats, man. They started when I about the same time I did, and they're they're just under. Or, you know, Chad was Chad's like two subs away, bro. So 
If anybody hasn't subbed to him, go give him a give him a give him a gift day when he comes home today. Let him see, let him see number five on there. But um, mm, 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 sugary, the Grateful Dead. First concert I went to, I couldn't tell you one song they played because I didn't know who the fuck they were, and it was just a it was a, a jam band. Hey, Mrs. Knockout, salute, salute, thank, sister. Thank you so much for coming in, man. Let me um let me make sure you get your get your blue tag in here. I don't want anybody. Anybody bothering Mrs. Knockout 86, man? Her husband has a great show. I'm sure she does too, but uh, I appreciate you coming in here, sister. I, I really do, man. Thank you. Don't forget to hit the like, sub, and and uh, come back tonight, man. We're going to talk to Bobby Chez, former light heavyweight and cruiserweight champion. and uh, um, I, I cannot wait for that. That's going to be such, such a good time. Uh, you know, I, I, I said earlier, I talked to Bobby, you know, I've talked to him a couple of times, but yesterday we spoke for about an hour, and dude, man, this man is going to is gonna tell us some 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 stories of boxing back in the, in the 80s and the 90s that, uh, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's going to be breaking stuff, man, it's, you know, we think boxing's a dirty sport today. <laughs> today it's a fucking Boy Scout camp. You know, Mick Smith, I, I, I know Bobby Chez through through friends of mine in this boxing community. And, and, and the number one man is my, my brother, Trick Nolte. Trick Nolte, will, he'll call me up. <laughs> he'll say, you ready for this? I'll say, yeah, yeah, what's up? Three-way call. He's got he's got Vinny Paz on the other line. You know, he's had uh, Kirk Johnson. Oh man, you know Trick. Trick's an amazing man. Trick's my brother, man, and and, and Trick Trick lined up Bobby Chez, man. I I wouldn't have known how to get in touch with Bobby Chez. I, I'm starting to do these little feelers, feelers. Uh, you know, I, I I catch him on Twitter. I I don't do Facebook. I I did that years ago. I think I don't think I've been on there for five years or so. But um, you know, you meet these cats through social media, and 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 they 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 actually, they they're just as happy to get on here and and speak to us as we are to listen to them. Andrew Charles, my brother, salute. You know, it's 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 beautiful because we can we can give you know it, it's a cliche now, but we can give these cats their flowers while they're still alive, and they appreciate that, man. You know, Drew had Julian Jackson on the other night, man. I was watching that. I watched. I didn't catch the live. I caught the replay, and I could see the look in Julian's eye. <laughs> Sparkling, bro. You know, you're giving these cats a platform, and they're giving us. Fucking entertainment. You know, you're, ne you're never going to see these people again. And, you know, yeah, Chess is a member of Mensa. He's a, he's a fucking genius. You know, me and him up here talking, I don't think it's, I don't, we're going to have to, we're going to have to uh, educate some of you. Like, maybe we're going to have to have a, uh, an associate minimum to get into place. <laughs> no. <laughs> fucking Bobby. You know, you're not going to pull one over his eye. He's a, he's a smart cookie, man. And anyway, you know what? I, I, I'm really, I, I'm, I'm honored. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm so looking forward to that tonight. You know, we, we've had a few, a few legends on, on, uh, on this little, this little show that we, that we, that we uh, plagiarized the name Tuesday Night Fights, and we do, and um, it's going to be coming on in a, in, in a few hours. So, I'm getting myself ready right now with this toka two that my, my beautiful wife has cleaned up for me still have to do it again because she she insisted i that, that that i only go on here with a clean toka too man and hey yeah baby so anyway these dudes oh yeah the the leader of the band his name was frank he he modeled himself after bob weir had the ponytail and again you know he had a guitar in his room but Anyway, bro, these guys had these weekenders, weekend marathons where you, a hit of acid, I think it was like three bucks or something like that for a hit of acid. And you're there for the weekend. You know, you I don't know if any of you have ever done psychedelics before, but see, back in the, back in the seventies, bro, back in the seventies, it was a, um, drugs were kind of, drugs were relatively soft. You know, there weren't, they, 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 they were hard drugs, but the masses the, the, the general population of drug abusers, it was marijuana, maybe a little acid. Every once in a while, somebody would have, uh, 
they break into their mama's pharma, their mama's medicine cabinet and have a, a two and all or a second all or something like that, a quaalude. I guess there was a lot of shit there, but it wasn't like it is today. People weren't doing it. it, it uh, I don't know, but it, but it was it was more of a soft drug era. That's a that's the best way I can describe it. And um, this acid, if if you've ever tripped before, you. St- you get through tripping, man. It's like it's like you ran a marathon. You know, you need you need a, a twelve hour nap and you need um high rehydration. You need I mean it's 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 exhausting. It really is, bro. And, and and these cats are doing it from Friday afternoon until you know, the brave ones would do it like Sunday morning at four o'clock, five o'clock. You, it's a it's a twenty four hour thing, so it's fucking it's weird, weird shit, man. Now you'd be smart, John Smith. And in fact, they were very selective. And, and uh, you know, what, I, what I've known of you so far, I, I don't think you would have been selected, but it doesn't matter. I was not the judges. I was I was a mere, uh, I, I, I was a child in those hills. I went there and I, and I did the window pane. And see, I, I, had, I had done acid a few times when I was a teenager. This is when I was about 20. I was, I was up in Boston as a student. And, um, you know, I, I, I could hand, acid wasn't going to bother me. I had handled it. I had done it out in the, out in the fields with the, with the beautiful sun drenched mom. I mean, it, it was, it was a fun thing once you could handle it. And I was, I was a kid. I, I didn't have a job. I didn't care, man. My, I, I had my, my, my mom is home to go to my daddy's home for Christ's sakes. You know, they paid for almost everything back then. You know, I, it was funny. I think back about it now, man, easy, easy days. But, um, anyway, man, all they would do is play dead and, 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 and pass the bong around too. They always had a bong there and they always had good weed. And that was acid and bong hits. And it went on literally for days. You know, cats would, would maybe make uh, maybe food runs, go out and grab some uh, some uh, tacos from... Uh, what the fuck was the name of the place up there, man? Jack's something. Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box. They were all over the place, man. All, open all night long. And it was uh, it was just a, it, it was I don't know maybe a ritual with these cats, but they did it every weekend for a long time. I I don't even remember when it stopped. I stopped before it stopped. But anyway, bro. And when there was a dead concert around, it was a pilgrimage. You know, it, it was like an Ali Frazier fight. To, 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 the way that, that, that I can relate to it with with us boxing fans. And um, you know, they'd come from far and wide, and they'd. They'd make their special punch. It had, you know, wine skin with wine in it, vodka, beer, whatever. They they didn't give a shit, man. And it always had some drugs in it too. And it was kind of whoever was there with crazy time, reckless people. Maybe maybe they're all dead right now. Who knows, man? They were they were fucking nuts. But all deadheads. And they'd go to these concerts, man. They'd. You could tell them a mile away. You could see them coming, bro. They had the a weird look. They would, they had flowers. They had fucking crazy hairdo. They had crazy looking cars that they drove in. They had the vans. The fucking it was it was whack. Totally whack. Like Bill Walton, man. Any any Celtics fans remember Bill Walton? Bill Walton was a deadhead. Knew them all, man. When when they came to Worcester. He took all the Celtics to a dead concert. They're all talking about it. That's fucking Larry Bird was still stoned fucking three days later, man. But um, but but that's what it was. It was LSD, a lot of weed, and Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead all the time. And it's funny because these fans are loyal. You think some of these boxing, some of these um, boxing fanboys or whatever you call them today, uh, uh, are blindly loyal to a fighter. These deadheads, man. You you go to a to a, to a different environment where they're playing different stuff on the turntable, and they're like, um, hmm, what? Very uh, scrutinizing everything on there. They want to hear dead, or they want to hear Jerry with um the Jerry Garcia band with Merle Saunders or or Bob Weir, and that and that's another thing about the dead too. They they um yeah Bill yeah Bill from Portland, bro. He, after he was traded to the Celtics a little bit later in his career, it was about 80, uh, 86, 87, that, that, that time, backup center for Robert Parrish. But um, he was a deadhead. Crazy. I mean, he, 
rainbows weren't considered uh, offensive or a symbol of anything, but but what they were. I mean, LGBT, they they ruined rainbows, bro. You know, rainbows, mushrooms, all that crazy shit back then. I mean, these were these were fucking people who were who were tripping on acid, bro. You know, you'd have to have you'd have to have uh, either done that or or gone into I don't know maybe a simulator. I'm sure that they've got those today. Virtual acid trips and simulators. And um, the first organ player the dead had, uh, Ron McKern, Pigpen. He he died at that magic age. He was in that 27 club. Drank himself to death. Cirrhosis. Him and Janis Joplin were hanging for a long time, man. Passing that southern comfort back and forth. But he died... He died at that young age, and uh, the first time I saw the dead, he was in he he was in the band. He did the they they did this thing called Europe '72. It was a triple album that came out, and it was their their whole tour of Europe. They had Frankfurt, they had Italy, Milan, UK, Edinburgh. I mean, all over sold out stadiums. Because the dead, the one thing about the dead man, they they pack a fucking stadium. Like I said, they have loyal fanatic fans. Dick Justice, salute brother. They probably, they still do to this day because the dead still has offshoots. You know, the, a band that was started in the 60s, members have died. It's still reincarnated and they still have, um, what do they call it? They, oh, there's been so many different names of, uh, of the different reincarnations, but it's the same, the same nucleus, the same band. They just go on and on and on and cats just fill stadiums. They played a couple of years ago. It was... Um, Dead and Company, they call themselves. Bob Weir, uh, uh, John Mayer on guitar. Is that his name? I can't even remember his fucking name. But um, they had almost all the surviving members. Uh, the replacement for, for Jerry, I, I'll, I'll remember his name so, soon, but they sold out Fenway Park for like um, for three concerts. And I don't know how many people go in there, but it's got to be 50,000. You know, using the uh, the playing field, but it's crazy shit, though, bro. Crazy shit. Um, you remember Gore? You remember Vice President Al Gore? His wife Tipper. She was a deadhead, and they used to go to dead. They, they made being a deadhead cool back then. You know, the yuppies could be deadheads. It was, it's, it was Americana. That's the way it was, man. And I was fucking hanging out with the deadheads too, bro. They were. They were some crazy cool people. So I'm doing this for a little dedication to the old deadheads, man. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're so, it, the ones who survived, they're, they're probably so far advanced on social media. I mean, you know, sometimes you see, I mean, you see it all, you see these dead sites all over the fucking internet. And I'll bet these fucking cats, fucking tie dyed rip denim sandal wearing fucking deadheads from the 60s and the, the fucking 70s they're probably running these fucking um big social media sites now for the dead and raking in the, the i don't know bro i don't know man because i know they like the dead said they don't fade away jay blues my brother salute man jay blues jay blues probably digs on the dead once in a while there's a lot of, a lot of people don't admit it no pads. I prefer Pink Floyd with my LSD. Pink Floyd was a good band too, bro. <laughs> Hippies were a good movement. I'll, I'll read some of these comments, man. They're, 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 always, they're always cool to read here, man. Mick Smith, Pink Floyd. Hey, man. I love Pink Floyd too. I, I just had a... I had a, a... A vast taste in music. I still do. Now I do even more. Yeah, the progressives. I mean, man, well, you know, you should have seen the start of them, bro. It was fucking crazy because, um, you know, it was back in, the, back in the late 60s, early 70s, a lot of radical shit going on. I mean, crazy shit, you know, fucking Abby Hoffman, the Black Panther movement. I mean, it was fucking, it was, it was, a, it was a revolution. It really was, man. And the Grateful Dead. They started out in San Francisco, and they were part of this fucking thing that uh, Timothy Leary and um, 
Who's the other cat, man? I'll, I'll, I'll think of it soon, but it was the electric Kool-Aid acid test. Geo James, bro, salute. And that's and what they did was the dead would play, and Timothy Leary, Ken Kesey, Ken Kesey was the uh, he was the merry prankster back then. They called him man, and he would organize these these uh, acid trips. LSD was not illegal in the sixties, and um, and Timothy Leary would fucking Ken Kesey. He would he he would arrange these these gatherings of people that just do LSD and listen to the Grateful Dead. That's where it all came about, bro. Yeah, Ken Kesey, Jack Kerouac, that whole fucking crazy, that whole crazy beat generation. Yeah, Manson was the hip. See, Man when Manson came around, that's what that's what uh, ended the uh, the summer of love. It, it's it was an idealistic time, an idealistic movement, but it was just just so so impractical. You knew it wasn't going to last. You know, I was a wide-eyed kid going into it. I, I, I had aspirations to, uh, you know, to go there and be and be part of it. But man, I saw it crumble, and reality set in, and you kind of realized that, uh, you know, maybe you can get you can get these little moments with a with a tab of LSD and some some good friends and some Grateful Dead, and that's kind of like what I, that's what I was uh, experiencing. That's where I got the. Uh, Maybe the attitude I have now, bro, you know? Yeah, the, as an, it, it was great, man. You know, the thing, another thing about these dead concerts when you went to them, they, they shared. People, people would, 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 make, would make soup. I don't know if you'd even want to eat it, but, but they shared what food that they had. It was uh, a lot of energy there, man. A lot, a, 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 a lot, a lot, a lot of real, um, a feeling of uh, community. You know, communes. That's what that's where it came from. That's what half of them them hippies in communes, man. You know, I I never went to one. I've heard about them. I talked to people that lived on them, but that was a little bit before my time. And you know, I was kind of like the uh, the seventies. We were we were a little bit leery of that shit because we had seen people get burned and Nixon for sure, bro. You know, I I remember the Nixon the night that Nixon was um was uh that he resigned where where he he beyond impeachment that 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 all he went through. No, no, Mr. Paz. You know, you would do it for your friends. You'd spike their drinks, and you'd and and, and they, they'd be glad you did sometimes. But different times. Hang on a second. Okay. Turn on the heat. It's cold out there. I didn't realize it. But anyway, bro, yeah, Watergate, all that, all that crazy shit in the in the um in the seventies, man. It was uh, it was trying times. It was tough to uh. Funny that when you think back upon it now, living through it was kind of fun. Yeah, Nixon was definitely trash. Nixon was um, tricky dicky. You know, it was uh, the uh. It, the fucked up thing was he got elected twice, and and, and that's what you know. The I think it was uh, uh was it the six the seventy two no the sixty the election of sixty eight. Richard Nixon was reelected. He, he didn't have much of a, a, a of a opposition. I think it was um ah oh, shit man it, uh, Hubert Humphrey, you know, peace candidate. Vietnam was was raging. And it was it was a weird time, but we elected Nixon, uh, re-elected him, so the country kind of got what it deserved with Richard Nixon. But man, the Grateful Dead, man, they were see that they, they they play so much so much different shit, man. And they, and they, they had a when Pigpen died, they keep when the uh, organ player died, they brought um they got this cat named Keith Godshaw, but his his wife came with the package too. The only female singer the Grateful Dead ever had, and um, and the fucking traditionalists they hated her, Donna. They would boo her on stage. She only lasted a couple of years, and um, you know she she was with the the harmony. She didn't have a very good voice. I saw I saw um, 
Tim Moose, are you in here, brother? Salute, my brother. Good morning, my man. Thanks for stopping by, man. I, I guess to pay more attention to the uh, to the chat. I hope anybody didn't sneak into that. I didn't shout out because, man, you know, I, I hate uh, I hate doing that, man. I'm I'm, I'm catching the comments. I'm, you know, I'm I'm digging on some dead. I haven't I haven't dug on some dead in a while. BDA, bro. Salute, bro. You know, I I had some bootleg tapes, but I don't have any tapes at all now. I don't even know where my reel to reels went. I I have um albums and shit, but man, all that stuff it stayed in different places that I had, and and I have three thousand jazz albums right now, man. I I never I don't play them. My turntable doesn't even work, and it's like I just want to get rid of them, and give them to somebody who wants them. Um, the dead that was the thing about the dead tapes. I think I mentioned that earlier. They used to they used to uh, record. The dead actually had a special spot set up where you could put your, set up your microphones and record. And I had uh, this dude that I knew knew a deadhead gave him a, a a briefcase full of cassette tapes from all different concerts all around up and down the East Coast. And because what they do is the deadheads they trade them they trade the cassettes and I mean it's a it's a crazy thing. It's it, it would be nice if boxing fans could do that, man. You know, trade uh, trade memorabilia and stuff, but. You know, I guess it's um, you know back then is different than now. Now, once you get a tape of a concert, you can download it and and everybody can get it. I don't know if you get away with it on YouTube, but you know because everything is copywritten and all that shit the way it is now. Weird, weird, strange, strange. Like the dead would say, "What a long, strange trip it's been." So if we can. We can share a little bit of that here today. That, that's basically all I want to do because, like I, like I was stating earlier, man, we're doing our, our Tuesday night fights tonight. Me, Chad, George, G5. And we have a special guest tonight, man. A very special guest, man. Mr. Bobby Chez. Bobby said he's going to give me an hour tonight, man. First he said a half hour. I said, come on, Bobby, a half hour? I was hoping for two hours. But it's funny because, you know, we talked for an hour yesterday and he told me... um. I said, what time do you want me to send you the link? And so I sent it to you in about an hour. He goes, uh, make it earlier than that because I like to be there early. So I'm kind of thinking, if he's there early, man, we're just going to go on and, uh, I mean, we'll start going. And uh, I'll say, Bobby, you told me till 8 o'clock, so we'll get what we can here. Hey, there's, there's my, my bro, Mad Chad, over here. Hang, hang on a second, man. Hmm, let me take this call. Let me put it on speaker. Mad Chad. Bruce Cass. What's happening, bro? Hey, I'm doing a show right now, Matt Chad. You, you, oh, you're, right, right. Get a doctor, get a doctor, get a doctor. You're on live, brother. Oh, you, you, you with the Grateful Dead? Yeah, man. I, are you trucking? We're listening to some shit in the background. I, I, I'm yeah. Do, I'm doing some bonging. Yeah. I'm hey. just getting on the highway heading north, and I'm pumped up about this Bobby Chess tonight, Bruce. I really am, man. <laughs> I'm glad you called, brother. We got Dick Justice. We got Mr. Pads out there. Oh, no! we got, I, got, got I, got J, I got Jay Blues. I got Tim Muzzy. I got BDA Boxing, bro. BDA Boy. Shout out to BDA. Mix, right, mix, Mr. Mix, Pad? Mix, mix in here. Oh, not that asshole. Oh, yeah. Dick Justice. I'll tell yeah. you, bro. You know, we, we Geo, Geo James is in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we got a, we, we, we've we got Mrs. 86 Boxing. She stopped in. I don't know if she's still there. Andrew Charles is in here. Tupac is in here. I can smell the mothballs from here. Everybody's pulling taffy from the sky. Is everybody a deadhead today? Wow. George H. He, he's got his tie. Oh, on. George H. Everybody's got a little dead in them, Bruce. Absolutely. I don't want to forget anybody. PGH, <laughs> PGH Big Dog's out there, bro. Yoda Crush is in here. So Yoda yeah. Crush! Yeah, man, Chad, I, I figured, what the fuck? I, I need some practice. I haven't, I haven't done a show in about a week, so I figured I'd, I'd loosen it up, see if the yeah. technique still work. So, yeah, my brother, how you doing today, man? Hey, do, do it better than yesterday, Bruce. You know, it, it's a beautiful day. Just heading north up to Augusta. You know, uh, yeah, beautiful day. Baseball playing later with my little buddy, Lou. You know, going to go play, pitch him some balls. He's got a game tonight at 4.30 or 5.30. I uh, go to the game, you know, watch a little Little League and, and, and then go hang out with the champion Bruce and, you know, G5 or whoever, hey, you know, be there, you know. I, I, but, I, but Bobby Chez, you know, it's like like the 80s, you know, I think it's 80s. You know, it's like I just remember him just being, uh, 
consummate fighter. You know, he was just in there. He could take a punch. He could give one. He, he, he wasn't boring. Uh, just to have him on the show tonight, you know, it's just it's just something to really look forward to, Bruce. And, and, and like I say, I must commend you and the champ for, for you guys putting it together. Trick Nolte, it's, 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 Trick Nolte. Trick, Trick Nolte. Shout out to Mr. Nolte, absolutely. But, but you know, all you three, man, you're just giving this 52-year-old man that doesn't get, you know, a buzz off. Oh, and to really, to really look like I'm going to fun town as a kid, you know, I'm getting ready to go to the amusement park. So, so, so I'm pretty excited for it, Bruce. I hear that, my brother. I hear that. And they're all shouting you out in the chat over here, my bro. Yeah, good stuff, Bruce Cass. All right, I'm just coming up, I think, on a state trooper. I'm just going to try to lower the phone down. But I just wanted to call to say hi. And if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, I'll see you tonight, buddy. God bless you, my brother. I'll see you tonight. Thank you, Bruce. Bye, buddy. Hey, bro. What's better than that, man? What's better than that, man? You know, I, maybe I shouldn't have had that music up so so loud, but. I got very excited when 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 our bro Mr. Mad Chad call, calls me up. It's yeah. See, that's um, that's Donna, and that that just wasn't Grateful Dead. We'll get a little beyond that. Beavis, what's happening, bra? Yeah, Beavis, he's a character, man. Phil, he, he he did a thing on me the other yesterday. I found it. The Mike Tyson. I I, I don't even know if I can find it anymore because he has so many different fucking uh, websites. And you know, you when, when when he was Mr. Burns, you try to find Mr. Burns, man. Good luck. Yeah, see, they'll take a song like it's all over now, and they'll put their own style to it. You know, Bob Weir. So this was very easy to listen to, and and, and these these uh, these deadheads were were very simple people, very simple-minded people. And I'm gonna look at this. Look at this jewel. I think I have to, I have to put my hand behind it. All right, there we go, there we go. That's heavy stuff here, man. That's a that's a beautiful bud. I can attribute that my wife my wife got that for me yesterday. Guts to love him. I'll, I'll see if I can get her. I'll see Hey baby. I'll see if I can get her to give me a to, to get, clean my bong, man, because this is, I want to do a couple more around here with you. Can you clean this for me, please, baby? I'm kind of stuck in my, my, <gasps> it almost, it almost spilled. <laughs> that was glass. Can you imagine if I smash my glass bong, my toka too, on the air? <laughs> you'd really see how my patience was. You'd, you'd see how, um, I'd have to really bite the bullet on that one. But you know, I've said many a time, that's glass. It's not permanent. Glad I, I, I've broken before. I, I had this fifty dollar bong, and the fifty dollars back in the early eighties. That was that was an investment. This thing was, it, it stood two feet high, and it and it, I thought it had a good base, but it didn't. Anyway, man, I'm out swimming in front of my house, and I got I got a dog in the house. I always had a dog. I, I love dog. I love dog more than people. But anyway, man, I had a dog in the house, and um, all of a sudden I heard. I knew just what it was, you know, that, that sound of glass. I was probably 30 feet away from it. I had the Monho Bay behind me and I heard that smash the glass. And, uh, but anyway, man, I, I think I used the thing maybe twice. I bought it at this place called the Grand Mariner in downtown Providence, man. It was a, a, a they, they sold bongs there. They sold funky t-shirts, kind of like the one I got on now, man, you know, the, uh, like this bad, like this bad boy here, man. Ah, uh, oh man, ah, oh man. But this is the Grateful Dead. I wanted to share it with you. I want to see if my wife. 
gives me a clean bong or comes over here and hits me over the head with it. <laughs> Even if she doesn't, hey, I always keep, I always stay prepared. I got a couple of, a couple of joints in there. Always, you know, always have something at, at, at your disposal. But no, no, look at this, look at this. Thank you, baby. Look at, look, look at, look what I have. Almost, almost like it's brand new out of the box. The legendary Toka 2. And you know, we've we spoke on this bad boy before. This was a, uh, the first Toka 2 I bought, I bought it back in the Grateful Dead days. Back in 1975, I think it was. It was $24.99. And I'm like, are you crazy? 25 bucks for a fucking bong. And the guy's telling me it's worth it. It's worth it. These are this is the best bong you're gonna ever buy. And <laughs> the son bitch was right. Yeah, an old school head shop. Um an old school head shop. And and the one I bought the, the first Toka 2 at is, was called George's Folly. And I won't ever forget that name either. You know, you got the I forget my own name, for Christ's sakes, but I, something about this George's Folly. I used to buy these papers there, too. They were called clubs. Um, there was no glue in them. You could put them in your wallet, and they, you wouldn't open them. It wouldn't be like a freaking, uh, a, uh, you know, like a, a deck of cards stuck by glue together. It would be like a deck of cards. They, they, they'd come out one at a time. But anyway, man, patin uh, is what it said on there. They were from France, I believe. They were They were glycerin. Almost like if you lit one with a with a lighter, go up like flash paper, and they were they were the best because you didn't taste any paper, and that's why I like the Toka too, man. It's the cleanest way to smoke reefer I've ever found. Once, man, I dig them, but all that tobacco, that tobacco leaf you're getting in there, that's carcinogenic. You don't want that, bro. You know that. I believe marijuana keep uh, will, will will help your your lungs from getting uh getting lung cancer. You know, there's di different things I've heard from from different people who know what they're talking about about uh, about the THC not not uh, not coating the receptors with the uh, like the nicotine does, which well, so, so so you you know your body takes in the carcinogens, the the, the reefer pretty much slips through and it, and is coughed away when you um, when you clear your, your lungs. But anyway, man, I I've, I've never met any any heavy smokers who have lung cancer. It's, Pot smokers, tobacco smokers, yes. So I um, I put that. I I don't. Uh, I try not to smoke paper, and that includes blunt, blunt paper. So just talk it too, man. Glass, glass and fire, and look how clean that is. Watch. No smoke in that. No smoke in the room. Only what comes out of my mouth, my lungs. And it gets down there so far with that little carburetor at the, at the, at the end of the hit. And you notice when people smoke, there's usually a dark cloud. That's all the, uh, that's all the THC in your smoke. People are just wasting that. With the, with the Toka 2, the smallest amount of weed for the most amount of damage. And the Grateful Dead, they were the original, the original jam band. You know, they would get, you go to a Dead concert, and they would take a, a song. Well, see, Grateful Dead did not make the radio. You know, radio, they wanted their songs under three minutes. That Then they, they expanded on them a little bit. You know, like Stairway to Heaven, songs like that, songs that, that were, or a little bit, a little longer than the, the three-minute format, because I was into I was into broadcasting too for a while, and I and I saw that happen in the Grateful Dead. No, no, they couldn't. You couldn't play that. Maybe on the maybe on our own night stations you could do it, but uh, you know they they do these eighteen-minute jams, and they were it, commercially it wasn't um, it wasn't a, appealing to the the advertisers. But anyway, the Dead had their own cult. They. They became the number one touring band, the number one grossing band for a long time, because all they did was tour and they sold out stadium after stadium. 
and like, like I said, man, you think some boxers have a loyal following. The Grateful Dead had a loyal following. And then even when they weren't, when they weren't touring as the Grateful Dead, they would go off into these, um, these different splintered groups like um, Bob Weir. This, this is where, this is where I started listening to the Grateful Dead again, returning to the Grateful Dead. I saw Bob Weir, a band called Bobby and the Midnights. He had uh, Billy Cobham on drums. Any anybody who knows knows jazz knows Billy. He had Alfonso Johnson on bass. He had David Sanchez on fucking keyboards. I mean, you know, bro, this is these are, and this is with Bob Weir. I'm, I'm saying, wow, this is. But anyway, it was it was mind blowing. It was. I just saw how how, how talented the Dead were. Or how other really talented musicians wanted to play with the Grateful Dead, so you know, I it, it kind of reinforced the uh, you know the my, my original how I dug them I, I dug the Dead like I said the first band I saw hanging with the Deadheads hanging with even even um, even without the Deadheads the people who 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 who. who Saw these offshoot bands, and like I said, Jerry Garcia, he he toured with Merle Merle Saunders, organ player. I saw him at the Jazz Workshop in Boston, maybe a three hundred seat venue, crowded, elbow to elbow, packed. I mean, you had to get a, a ticket in advance, and I was smart enough to do that. But it was um, I, I think I recognized maybe a couple of songs. They played the night they drove old Dixie down, but really long. It Jerry down 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 jamming away and, and and jerry's another string he's he, he's missing his uh his, his ring finger on his on his right hand a, lo a lot of different theories about that some people say the grateful dead cut it off or oh, there's all kind of stories that went around i don't know how it happened i i never even paid any more attention but i mean the, the, the dude just had a uh, had his own style he could play reggae he could play jazz you know he wouldn't embarrass himself but he, you know he wouldn't play like a george benson or you know, but, but he was cool, man. You know, he, he, he fooled a lot of people. And, um, and then Phil Lesh, the bass player, I saw him do a tour. He had, um, he had Warren, Warren Hayes from Government Mule. And he had, uh, Bruce Hornsby on piano. I mean, really, really good crossover stuff. Very talented musicians. And, um, they always... They always keep it fresh, and 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 the, the cats with the dead. They're still they're still touring with the, with them today. And um, dude, if I if I had a chance, I think I'd love to go to see a dead concert. You know, just to watch those those riffs. Because I mean, you know, I mean, Jerry's gone. I I remember the day Jerry died. I had my restaurant, and um, you know, I heard I heard on the radio. I don't know where I heard it, but I heard Jerry Garcia just passed away, and I was like, wow. You know, I, I see Jerry got into the heroin. That was his fucking killer. He, he he did this coke and he and he got cleaned up from that. He was drinking like a fish for a while, cleaned up from that. But the the heroin he could not conquer. That dog is, oh no, hey, oh no, oh no, he's having a nightmare over there. Come on, oh no, the dog has a the dog has a a bad dream. I can hear him going. <laughs> And I can't just let him go, go. So and I don't feel like getting up. So, so anyway, he's he's cool now. It's cool to kind of kind of get about six naps a day. I wish I could do that. And then just this, a nap and wake right up and do your thing. That's the way dogs are. Maybe eight. But their their crossover the crossover stuff was was really 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 um contemporary a lot of like top top jazz musicians playing with them so the dead they they, they evolve and yet they can get together the surviving members and sell out a fucking stadium yankee stadium at and no doubt you know they're um they're a legend i want to talk about them for a minute we did Basically, I want to tell you, cats, man. Tonight, boxers, boxing lovers, man. All my, all my friends that love '80s boxing and '90s boxing. We're gonna see one of the um, 
one of the shining stars. Hey, baby, give me one of my, can I have one of my, um, my, my magazines with, with, with Bobby Chez's, uh, just one of the, just one of them. I just want to show you cats some, some of the shit that I have. And they, <laughs> they all want to come. But anyway, man, you know, my, my wife's cool. She found, she found stuff like this, you know. Bobby Chez, the living the decisions of Bobby Sims. And there's, you know, there's little stories about him. His, his pictures on the, on the cover. No, this is, this is good. This is good. And, you know, his, his pictures up here on the, uh, on the right up top, man. That's a, that's a young Bobby Chez. That's when uh, they called it Tomorrow's Champions. We're going to talk about that. That was, that was a big thing on, um, on the, uh, on NBC's Wide World of Sports. No, no. NBC Sports World, ABC's Wide World of Sports. And then it's funny because I was, um, I was looking at these ratings the other day and, and, and the light heavyweights, man, check out the, the two top light heavyweights, Thomas Hearns, number one, Bobby Chez, IBF champion, number two. And you know, that's like, um, and, 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 oh, and, 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 and my man's going to come in here and, and, and talk to me tonight. And, you know, I, I he's going to talk to us. You know, he, he, he he's a, he's a great guy. You, you, know, you can make a phone call with him, but, but, uh, bro, he's going to share some fucking stories. He's told me some stories that, 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 that made my, whatever hair I used to have curl. I mean, it's like, wow. Really? He goes, oh, I've, I've told people this before, so you're not, you're not hearing anything new, but it's new for me. I mean, just a, just, just the, the, the life that, the, the, the way he grew up, man, abused family, his dad committing suicide. You know, we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot, a lot of heavy shit. And, you know, I, 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 I hope all you cats come in there and, um, and, and enjoy it with, with me, man. You know, because uh, like I said earlier, things like that, to see, to see bouncers like that. And, and, and Bobby's he's, he's seven years younger than I am, man. We were talking the other day. He thought he was talking to a younger guy. And, uh, and he was just telling me how he, he's into, he, he's into longevity. He, he's been taking supplements and vitamins and drinking a lot of water, eating clean his whole life. And, uh, he, he's going to share some, some of that too. How, how he's, how he's amazed doctors with his, his, his healing powers. And, um, water. I, I, I tell all, I tell all you cats the importance of water. And I, it's, I, I, I can't say it enough. You know, the Red Bulls, I, I never had one in my life. I don't even drink a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, this morning, what the hell made me smile? Somebody, some, some dude, some dude sitting on his porch in the back. I'm walking back with the dog and I hear good morning. I didn't hear it. I saw, I saw him put his hand up and I shut my, my, my music up. I was, I was digging on some, some fucking tunes and, uh, and, 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 and some old guy, Hey, good morning. Hey, hey, he got a big shitty grin on his face. And I, I had, I had one too. And my, and my dog started fucking giving me shit. In fact, the bastard, he bit me. I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but he, uh, See that little that, that little white spot down there? That's his that's his tooth mark. But um, <laughs> you know, it was kind of funny and it made me laugh. I didn't need a, I don't need a cup of coffee, man. You know, you, you get out the, the the air today, the the wind. I wish I could go up on a fucking um on a satellite and and, and see these air currents that are going around the, the Atlantic Ocean and the Monho Bay because it's it's been windy and cold for about three days now. You know, and they said it's going to subside because right now it's definitely subsided since it, it, yesterday, the day before. You know, you know how I turn the camera around sometimes so you can see out there. Um, it's calm now. It's it, it's relatively calm. But um, the last couple of days it's been crazy. You know, two foot seas, three foot seas, and um, I'd like to see I'd like to see those air those wind currents. Excuse me. We're hearing um. In, in Texas and Oklahoma, tornadoes. Tony Boswell. I hope you stay safe, my brother. Um, it's a crazy world, you know. I think we, I think we threw so much shit into Mother Nature. Back when I was a kid, man, I think Mother Nature said, "I'm trying to wash my mouth too on here, man." I, I think Mother Nature is telling us, uh, "Time for me to throw shit back at you." We, we, we're, we're seeing these out of control. Uh, Forest fires now. There's one in New Mexico on on the border, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, and 
I mean, it's, they said it's, it's larger than the ones in California. It's it's a, it's evacuating thousands and thousands of people from their homes. It's it's, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy, man. But you know, we can we can, we can all do our little parts now, man. You know, just 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 try to set an example. I know I know it's a different generation, and we don't we don't see it like like we did when I was a kid. But we do see it, man. I see. I go I, I go down to the. I, I go down to the point right near the fucking trash barrel and, and there's fucking shit on the ground. It's like, what the fuck, you know? To me, that's that's one of the few sins that you can commit is 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 littering, you know? Fucking up God's beautiful creation, the earth. See this tune right here? Bertha. One of the times I saw the dead, it was in, uh, it was Watkins Glen. It was the largest rock concert, largest outdoor rock concert of all time. They said I, there was upwards of six hundred thousand people there, from what I understand. Uh, Three hundred thousand or six hundred thousand. Somebody Google it for me. I don't, I don't know, man. But it was a lot of people, the largest at the time. And I couldn't see the stage. I didn't even have big, big uh, screens back then, nineteen seventy-three. But I could hear, I could hear it perfectly. You know, they had speakers all over the place. And this tune was the opening, opening song at Watkins Glen. What's true, Beavis? Uh, I, I only speak truth, bro. I try only speaking truth. That's why I, that's why I kind of, you know, I say I say things out here that uh, you, you can't call it bullshit because I, I mean, fucking anybody out there is is more than willing to uh, prove me wrong. I'm, I I share experiences of life and. I'm a good example of what not to do. Don't do what I don't do as I do. Do as I say. Salute, teach. Bertha, don't you come around here anymore? Yeah, so it's it's been an hour, man. I, I'm gonna be on in a little while. I I, I gotta get myself some uh, some Bobby Ches pictures to put up here when I'm when I'm talking to him and um. Looking, looking, box rocks. I don't get the dates wrong because he had some great fights, man. His fight with um, you know, I'm, I go on here and in my short term memory fri fries on me. You know, I I know who he beat for the light heavyweight title, Robert Daniels. For some reason I, I I couldn't think of it. And it's like, you know, when I I'm asking I'm, Bobby, I'll ask you about the Robert Daniels fight, man. You know, you're uh uh. A washed up middleweight. Uh, they thought you were over the hill at light heavyweight, and then you come on, and you win the cruiserweight championship. What the fuck happened to you, bro? Did you take some of that snack supplements or what, man? So you know, I'm gonna ask him that question tonight and see what he says, and we're gonna have a good old time, man. So uh, th thanks so much, everybody, for stopping in here, man. This was uh, the Grateful Dead and my my experience as a deadhead, and I. I hope I kind of told you what, I, what what it was all about from from my perspective. See, this was um, this was 1977, and when I when I was at Watkins Glen, uh, when I saw him was 1973. I saw him probably the Civic Center in in 75, I think. I think that was the last time. But then I saw the offshoot bands in Boston. Or did I see the Dead again? I Man, it's like I probably saw him five, six times. I don't even know. And plus, like I said, I saw Jerry Garcia band, Bob Weir's Rat Dog, and um, and and uh, Phil Lesh's fucking all these crazy bands, and and you know when I when I start speaking fast, I can't remember things. That's I think that's what it is. I think my mind kind of speeds up on me. I start mumbling and rambling on, and then I I don't remember the basic things of what I'm talking about. So I I probably should slow down a little bit, man. What we smoking today, man? We are smoking some diesel today. I got I got this nice butter diesel right here, man. I, I showed it off earlier, man. Teach, I'll, I'll show it to you again because I'm, I'm proud of this one. This this is this is a, a a three and a half gram bud, a quarter ounce right here, bro. This is a beautiful a beautiful bud of grand granddaddy purple. And put the hand there so it um whoops. Almost, almost spilled my water, but I got. I'm lucky. I got this spill-proof top on here, so even if it's, it doesn't spill, but yeah, no, I got this this granddaddy prep I'm smoking, bro. Check that baby out. Yeah, that's, there we go. There we go. Hey, that's that's a beauty, bro. That's a beauty. That's 
That's what I'm puffing on today, man. Breaking off little pieces of it. Like this. You know, little little chunks like this. Put it on the tray. See, today, that's another thing you pot smokers, man. Fucking humidity is very, very low. It's it's dry. Like the like, like I said, man, the um the bushfires. Yeah, that'll definitely give you grateful dead flashbacks for sure, brother, for sure. But um, you know, you gotta keep your weed well fucking uh you gotta keep the air away from it. You gotta keep it in a nice airtight jar. And I, I, I love these little these little medicine these little medicine vials you get, you know? Because I have to take two uh I have to take two medications. I have, I have hypertension, so I take hypertension. I have high blood pressure. Hypertension. Man, I can't even say that fucking word right now. But anyway, I have to take one of those every day. It's an a ten and all fifty. Probably be taking it for the rest of my life. And hey, it's the way it goes, bro. And I, you know, I, I, I've looked into it the best I can on, on, on my, uh, and, and Googled it. And I, I'm better off with it than without it. And anybody else who has high blood pressure, salute my brother Reggie Owens, man. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, Reggie, I, 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 I shouldn't even be on here anymore because I said an hour, and I'm already an hour and, and, and three minutes. But um. And I also take some called famotidine. I have something called Barrett syndrome, where the uh, my my uh, muscles in my my uh, esophagus at the bottom they're worn out. So your muscles close, your esophagus closes. It keeps your uh, stomach acids from going into your um, you know coming up and giving you a hot burn. And uh, esophageal cancer is the largest largest uh, rising cancer in the country right now. And they're finding out the correlation between people with Barrett's and people with esophageal cancer is is common so um if you find your barrett's early if you have something like that you, you i take famotidine twice a day 20 milligrams you can buy it over the counter Prirosec, and um i'm, I'm prescribed that so that's a, that's my two prescription uh medications that i take plus I, I take a shot of testosterone every 20 days why i don't know but regulates the cholesterol and the um organ functions and things like that doesn't grow hair back and uh Sex life is good, so maybe I need it. But they, but when I when I yearly I have a, a blood blood work done, and they say my testosterone is off the wall; it's really high. Um, they say there's nothing. I, I I've tried to find out well, what what's wrong with a high testosterone ratio. Cause I, I looked it up, and nothing, nothing. Only good things. And see, this is another 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 uh, style of dead playing in here. This is an old fucking. Old rock and roll song, man. Yeah, this. What's the name of this tune? I can't even think of the name of it right here. Good loving. There we go, man. Good loving. But anyway, I'm going to end it on that one. One more hit. Because I only smoke when I'm on the air. I'm, I'm, I'm straight to most of the time not all the time most of the time this is this is where i i have to really use my anti-anxiety medications and my um my depressants antidepressants my de you know i don't really have any depressants life is pretty good right now not too many things depress me you know most of the things i see that are depressing kind of make me uh thankful for what i have so and then the things i don't have are the things i don't fucking need so not too many things depress me. Beavis, I told you, man, I have two strains here. I have some some diesel and I have some granddaddy purple. And um, those are the strains, my brother. Both of them are, uh, they're crossovers, very high indicas, which is what I need to keep my, my arthritis, which is my, my main ailment under control at this stage of life, so. The, the weed does it and uh great talking to you cats about it about weed about the grateful dead about my experiences with the grateful dead make sure you stop over here at 7 p.m tonight we're gonna have chappy chez man the matinee idol bobby chez is going to grace us on uh tuesday night flights a little thing that that uh that that i plagiarized to call this place so um, anybody out there who's who's got a, any kind of a love for for boxing in the '80s, we're, we're going to be talking to one of the one of the classics, man. 
So stop in. Any questions you have, Bobby's, I'm sure Bobby's not a, he, he doesn't shy away from anything, man. Bob, Bob, Bobby's the real deal, man. So uh, God bless everybody out there, man. Bruce Gas, Boxing Jazz and more. Out of here. Peace.